Good morning creators and welcome to another UAFN tutorial. In this episode, we're going to be updating my pin pad device with customizable colors and multiple passcodes with multiple outputs. This is a very common request from my community on Discord. So if you're interested in joining that, it's linked below. Um, I will just say really quickly, I'm glad to see this device used in, across all the maps in Discovery. Um, it's, it's hard to play a map and not come across this pin pad, so I'm glad that y'all are using it. Without further ado, let's get into it. So the first thing we're going to do is customize two colors that we have inside of our pin pad device. And those um, are the outside color block and the inner color block, which right now we have set to blue tone and kind of like a navy. Um, it looks like a, it's a gray color. So we're going to set those in our device up here. So we'll have an editable. Well, this um, background color of type color is equal to, and we're just going to steal that from down here. Make color from sRGB. Um, in fact, we're going to use a different function. We're just going to use the color um, color structure here, which is just color curly brackets, and then R stands for red, G stands for green, and then blue. B stands for blue, like so. Uh, and then we have the uh, foreground color, which we're going to steal from this color block right here. Just going to steal this data so that I can use it. Once again, this is a color, so same structure as the one above. R is 0. Green is 0 0.01. And then blue is 0.5. All right. So that allows you to change those, and that should be pretty convenient. Now we've got to pass those into our function. So in our make canvas function, we're going to want a foreground color. Actually, this is already in our device, isn't it? So we don't even need that. Sweet. Um, just go down here, replace this with background color and replace this with foreground color. You may want to uh, replace the text color and the background color, um, in which case you do the same thing um, using all of this. Where is the, should be at the top stack, um, somewhere up here. If you want to do that, that's, that's an option. But I figure most people like the black and the white um, for the contrast. Uh, the next thing we're going to do is create multiple outputs and multiple passwords um, so that you can have a different passcode tied to something else. So let maybe you have multiple, multiple layers of permissions and you want to give someone a lesser permission and someone like an admin permission. Um, you can set that up here. And what we're going to do is use an array. Um, so we'll have an array at editable. Sometimes I can't spell. <laughs> passcodes. Um, and this is going to use a passcode, which we're, we're going to define in a second. Uh, it's actually an array, so we're going to use square brackets before to indicate that it's an array. And we'll set that equal to array. Now, up here, we are going to create the passcode class. So passcode. And this is going to be a class. Inside of this class, we have an add editable. And this should be a concrete class because it is using editables. All right. Um, we're going to have the pin, which is an integer. We'll go ahead and set that to 0 by default. We're going to have another editable. And this one will be um, the success trigger. And for this, we're just going to do an optional trigger device and set that equal to false. Um, so the idea here is that maybe if maybe you're creating just multiple passwords and you want the same output, but just have multiple passwords. In that case, we're going to use success trigger as an optional, um, meaning that if success trigger is there, then it will use that. Otherwise, it will use the default success trigger down here. Okay. 
Uh, so we can go ahead and delete pin, and we should get some errors, which is beautiful. Um, so scroll down to where the errors pop up. And then we're going to create a for loop to handle this. So we're going to do for the, uh, let me see, for, should uh, collapse it so it's a little easier to read. There we go. Um, for the passcode and passcodes, we'll do PS and passcodes. We're going to do ps.pin. Um, we'll do passcode string is equal to ps.pin. And then we'll use quotation marks, curly brackets to convert that to a string. And we don't need that. So stuff per agent gets the um, gets the pin as a string. So we'll put that out here. If stuff equals stuff per agent, put the for loop inside of that. So we'll tab. Um, by the way, the trick I just did there was highlight and then tab. That lets you um, automatically add uh, an indent there. Um, so we're going to do a comparison if passcode string um, is equal to um, is equal to we need to get the stuff so stuff at two stuff at two this means that this executes and therefore we want to um, activate the success trigger so if We'll say inner trigger um, is equal to the the passcode success trigger. Add a question mark because this is an optional. Remember, um, like I said, we're going to test to see if it's there. If it is there, then we're going to trigger that. Trigger that with wm dot player. Otherwise. We're going to do success trigger, which is our default success trigger, um, trigger wm.player. All right. Um, you also notice that down here, we're going to have a fail event, and we also want to remove the pin pad. Um, so we don't want this passcode to trigger multiple times. If you have the same pin, um, it shouldn't trigger multiple things. So to fix that, um, we are going to remove the pin pad with wm.player, just because we need to. Uh, and then we are going to return. So you've triggered the event, you removed it from the player, and now you're returning so that this function is done. Now, if none of these match the passcodes, then you want to fail. Um, this is after the if statement, fail trigger. Um, in fact, you can just put it down here because if statement, just make sure that the players have stuff. Um, yeah, so that should fail the trigger, remove the pin pad, and should be everything you need. Um, quick, quick fix from the future. Uh, we need to backspace on these. All right, before we demo, I'm going to show you how this is set up. So we're going to go into our devices, search for a button device. All right, down here, we're gonna make that our assign pin pad button. And we want a fail trigger. It's just a trigger. That's gonna be our failure events. We're gonna want a success event. Let's do three passcodes. So we'll have three success events and this will be our failure event. So fail triggers here. Our default success trigger is this one. We're going to set up three passcodes. First one's 42. Uh, the next one is 69, because why not? Uh, and the last one we're going to do um, just plain 100. 
Now we want to set the value of two of these success triggers so we can test um, if those are working. And we can change the background color here. So we're gonna change that to, let's say, a, an obnoxious green and then the foreground color to a nice dark cyan. Sweet. Um, so now we need some sort of response so that we know that these are triggered, um, which I guess technically you'd be able to figure that on your own, but you know, it's nice to connect these. So we're gonna have a fail text, which should not display automatically. Um, we're going to trigger this when the fail trigger activates. All right. Um, we're going to make a second one. This is the default success. So we're going to say default success. And then select the other trigger, untriggered. Same thing over here. With these two, uh, we'll make this like success one and then success two. So we have that distinguish uh, there. And then we're going to set trigger three and then set this as trigger four. And now we can save and we can launch session to test this out. All right, now we're in game. So go test it out. Run up here, and then we're gonna give a incorrect number, five. It says fail. All right, we're gonna do 42, which should be the default success. All right, we're gonna do 69. Nice. And the last one we had was 100, which should be success two. And there you go. They're all bound to specific triggers. It works. If you enjoyed this tutorial, please consider subscribing, liking the video, um, or joining my Discord down below. Um, that's all from me, so have a great day and good luck creating.